Um, I have a video of Michael Irving that was... Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Damn. Ow. Oh. That hurt. <laughs> Damn. Fucking win. Ow. Oh, boy. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up the football gods. You know, um, I love that clip, actually. Um, that was last year, about a year ago, which is sitting out there at the fish pond, Gust of wind comes through, knocks the, the um, tripod, and literally bumped me right in the face. You know, if you can't laugh at yourself, then definitely don't be on YouTube because you're going to get all kinds of stuff that's going to happen, uh, things that will surprise you. You might find out you got something over here in the corner that you didn't expect. You're going to get trolls. You're going to get people who hate you, people who want to make fun of you and all that. And so all you got to do is laugh that shit off and realize that every one of those views of somebody making fun of you are views. And that's what it's about as far as YouTube is, is people want to watch you for whatever reason, love you, hate you, despise you, want to hang out with you. YouTube doesn't care. They only care that you're watching. So here we are. We've got the OTAs in the bank uh, for this week. We still don't have CeeDee Lamb or Micah Parsons. We hope to see Micah Parsons this week coming up in the next round of OTAs, which are organized team uh, workouts, uh, activities. Actually, we're talking about practice, not, not the game. Not the game, it's the practice. Although I will say that they are very, very important because if you listen to Mike McCarthy's press conference, he talks about the installs. The installs are basically the game plans, teaching the plays and stuff. And today's NFL is a lot different than what it used to be. When you used to have six weeks of training camps, you had two a days where you basically were working your job in the off season. You saw up a training camp and you're doing all the install and all the work and all the practice, practice and prep preparation for the seasons during that six weeks and having your four preseason games to go ahead and get all that stuff together. Now you have a shortened off season short and OTAs and less work. And some teams don't even use all of their practices. They basically want to say, we want to get our players healthy going into the season. We'll use the first few games as preseason because that's really the only time that you actually are going full go. You don't tackle to the ground. You don't have as many padded practices. The only time you go full speed are those games. And to equate practicing today in NFL versus playing the game. If you were a NASCAR driver, imagine all of your practice was at 55 miles an hour. And then come race day, you're driving 200. That's literally what you're doing between practice and the games. And so some teams start out better in the season the teams that have had more players that have been in the system and so on that know what they're doing versus teams that typically are bringing or changing or new coaching, new offensive philosophy will take longer to get on the same track. And you could see that evident last year with the Cowboys because the defense having Dan Quinn being there with the same players for several years, basically, starting out being the strength of the Cowboys, the Cowboys offense, bringing in Brandon Cooks and changing the offensive play caller to Mike McCarthy from um, Kellen Moore, there was a learning curve that it took a few weeks for them to really get a grasp of this. The good news, at least for the offense, is, well, we're going to be going into the same offense with basically the same players. So the offense should hit the ground running. The defense, on the other hand, may start out slower because it's got a different philosophy. Dan Quinn's philosophy was we want fast, lean, physical guys. We want guys that can rush the passer. 
if you look at the builds of the guys, everybody is taller, slimmer, and faster, which is great if you're playing with the lead. It is great if you know the other team is going to end up passing the ball a little bit. It's great if your linebackers are smaller safeties that are covering. The problem comes is when you are having to stop the run, which is playoff football, and you have a safety playing linebacker, then you have problems. When you have lightweight defensive linemen that are getting double teamed, you have a problem. And so this is (coughs) the change in philosophy. Now, some of the problem, of course, was we counted on guys that could not end up playing. We had a lot of hopes for Overshone, DeMarvin Overshone, to come in and actually play well for us as a weak side linebacker. He showed well in preseason, but unfortunately tore his ACL. Well, the great news for the Cowboys is Overshone is way ahead of schedule from having his ACL torn. And it was actually fortunate that he tore it when he did because it gave him more time to heal as opposed to Michael Gallup when he tore his in the playoffs in uh, February. You were looking at Overshone tearing his back in August, which gave him about an additional five months to recover. The great thing on Overshone, he's going to be playing weak side linebacker. And the weak side, um, or the will, whichever one you want to call it, but that's basically what it is, is the weak side. That is the guy who typically will cover guys in the slot. That is the guy who is like the chasing linebacker, who is a little bit quicker, and is the playmaker as opposed to the strong side or the middle linebacker. The middle linebacker is usually the bigger, stronger guy, the thumper, I like to say, because he can take on that guard that's coming up, shed that block, and be able to stop the run. And see, the Cowboys, for where they were before philosophically and player-wise, are in a better position than they were at linebacker. Much so much better. Eric Kendrick is still a big physical specimen who can play the thumper role. And Overshone, if he continues to play the way he is, uh, is showing up, gives you promise and hope that the linebacking core will be improved from where we were last year. From the time we lost Overshone and then we lost Vayton Van Der Esch, our linebacking core had to be one of the worst ones in the NFL. And our defense was basically smoke and mirrors um, to try and keep competing against other teams. But here's a little clip of DeMarcus Overshone um, after practice talking about the extra 11, 12 pounds he's put on. Um, Weight-wise, you want to get a little bit bigger than you were last year, or was that, was that smaller? I've definitely gotten bigger since last year, and that was a, a more of a, a me thing and, like, seeing my future in this league and what was going to be best for my body and, you know, uh, to be, you know, productive on the field and that was gaining weight and not just gaining weight in general but gaining lean mass muscle weight getting stronger so uh i'm definitely i put about 12 pounds 13 pounds of lean mass on and uh, i'm gonna go into camp a little bigger and and drop to where i want to play at which would be around 233 234 you're in the sand i'm uh will i'm sorry you're the will yes sir the ball's going back to the sand you're playing sand A little technical difficulty here. Let me refresh. Physical, um, wait, wait. Let's try that again. Okay. Well, I guess we're not going to get to the whole clip. But Overstone is definitely, is definitely getting his body right and getting, um, getting himself in shape and ready to rock and roll. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait to see him out there, and I can't wait to see this new-look defense. I think this is going to be the area where we improve the most. We basically had three problems last year when it came to playoffs. One, stopping the run. Mike Zimmer with this defense, Mike Zimmer being on the sidelines with the play calling and being there with the players, I think will be very, very much an improvement and motivational and will hold players accountable. Two, the shift in understanding that we must be able to stop the run. You already had a great back end, and now it's improving the front seven, which is definitely going to help. 
The third issue would be running the football. You kind of address that with the offensive line, but that may take time to sit in there. Zeke Elliott, I I hate to say, but I think that that is the plan, that Zeke's going to be the lead back again. Um, We'll see if there's any other move there. That's the one area you look at and say, we wish that we could improve a little bit more. But in hindsight, Mike McCarthy and his philosophy on how he likes to use his offense rather spread the ball around and is not that big of a run guy. Forget when he said, I just want to run the football. That's not Mike McCarthy. And of course, before we get out of here, we have to deal with the elephant in the room. And that is the contract situations, which is C.D. Lamb, Micah Parsons, and Dak Prescott. The thing, it's when I read the comments, when I see the hate videos and stuff where, you know, people put my name in their description and say Mark Holmes is talking, talking nonsense or Mark Holmes is, you know, uh, he, his health is poor and he's going to be dead soon or whatever. They always say that you're just a fan of Dak Prescott's. Listen, I am a fan of Dak Prescott's and I have been a lifelong fan of the Dallas Cowboys. I have seen so much in my 57 years of life on this planet. And what I see out there, contrary to what people believe, you, this generation of fantasy football people who believe it's just easy to pluck a quarterback and just plug one in, it's not that easy. You do get chances like C.J. Richardson came out the box and played great his first season. But you end up getting the Josh Rosens. You end up getting the uh, Daniel Joneses. You end up getting all of these ones that Dwayne Haskins that never pan out. You see veteran quarterbacks that go from place to place. Yes, you have your Steve Youngs that go from being a bust in Tampa Bay to being the Hall of Famer. But more times than not, you don't see that happening very often. And so that's where I look at this and I say, listen, I believe that Dak Prescott is the best option for the Cowboys. And the reason I've been saying that they needed to get the contract signed is it just continues to cost you more and more money. It just does. You got this done last year, maybe it's in the 40s before everybody else. You could have made him the highest paid and say he's 51 million. And right now we'd be saying, that's a great deal. As guys like Trevor Lawrence are saying, no, I, I want at least Jared Goff money. So the longer we wait to do these things, the harder it gets to get it done. Now, everybody is on the the bandwagon with Dak Prescott that he should take less money so they can pay CD and Micah and all that. But I don't hear anybody saying anything like that with Trevor Lawrence. I don't hear anybody saying that with any of these other young guys with Jordan Love. They only say it about Dak Prescott. Why is that? Is it? The Cowboys are a unique situation that nobody else has, that they're the only ones that would be paying top dollar for a quarterback that might hurt their team. And that's my point that I try and bring up. But let's see if we can get this to play here. Season where it's about contracts for certain. Don't know why. Hmm. May need to reboot our internet here. Okay. So let me try one more time here. Boom. Let's see if we can get it. It's, it's a time during this, this off season where it's about contracts for certain players. It's always a big thing. I, I'm, and we can have this discussion a little bit more later on, but it's OTA, organized team activity. For people who don't know, mm-hmm. organized team activity. This is a fancy word for practice. practice. <laughs> That's all it is. We're talking about practice. It's a fancy word We're for practice. Game? Yeah. Not the game. Not the game. But it's now come a time in the National Football League that if you don't show up to an OTA, you're making a statement. You're making a statement. You're saying something without saying something. Now, a lot of players who are not currently at their team's OTA more than likely have a contract dispute or a mm-hmm. contract issue, whether it's a quarterback and 
Dak Prescott, who's actually at OTA, or it's Cam Hayward, a defensive tackle for the Pittsburgh Steelers, who said, I'm going to stay away because of my contract. C.D. Lamb of the Cowboys, contract. Justin Jefferson, contract. T. Higgins on the franchise tag, not getting an extension with the Cincinnati Bengals. He's not there because of contract. So that's what the offseason has now presented us in the National Football League, that you don't have to talk. You just don't show up. And what's the other thing that you do? You unfollow the social media accounts of every team. Now, we have not seen that. It has not gone that not, far not with yet. some players. But we do know that that's always something in the tool, by, uh, the toolbox, the tool belt for a lot of players. But right now, it's almost like your three favorite sons. And when I say three favorite sons, it's Jerry Jones, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, almost has to choose who's his favorite son currently. In this version of the Cowboys, is it Dak Prescott? Is it CeeDee Lamb? Or a guy who I said, if you don't get it done now, it's going to be 10 times more next year in Micah Parsons when it comes to the contract. So when you have these three guys who are, I guess, the new age triplets, even though one plays on defense, this is the core of the Dallas Cowboys, a team that won 12 games last year that was upset at home by a much younger Green Bay Packers team. But I do know that you need these three guys in order to win football games. So does that put Dak Prescott on the back burner? How does he feel? He just saw Jared Goff, who was drafted number one overall in his same draft class mm -hmm. in 2016. I look at the accomplishments of Jared Goff, and I'm like, hey, man, Dak, you, you, you got to catch up to that. But yet, some people saw Dak Prescott ahead of Jared Goff for, I would say, a nice period of time, even though that Jared Goff has had postseason success. But Dak Prescott is your quarterback in Dallas. So why kind of keep the feet slow or slow-footed slow in terms of getting the contract yes. done? But Dak Prescott is there. He is in Dallas. He's not really worried about the contract, and he spoke for the first time in a long time. Here's a little uh, Dak Prescott uh, on the whole contract situation. Never have, never cared for it, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, would give it up just to just to play this game. So I, uh, yeah, um, so, so I allow that to, to the business people to, to uh, say, say what it's worth, um, what, what, what they're supposed to give a quarterback of my play, a um, person of my play, leader of my play, I guess you can say. And for me, it's about, as I said, control. I can control and handle that part, and the rest will take care of itself. You, do you believe him? Because the first part is that he, he's basically saying, money. I don't play for money. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Like, I know we don't play for money, but – we all know money, power, respect. Oh, that's <laughs> right? true. The Which money gives life. you the power and the respect, especially in the National Football League. Shout out to the locks. Yeah, got to. <laughs> money, power, respect, what you need in life. <laughs> that, that's what Dak Prescott is looking for. He want, For Dak, the money... Well, then why isn't if he doesn't play for money, then why doesn't he? <laughs> why doesn't he just take a five-year, hundred million dollar deal so mm -hmm. Jerry can pay CD and, and right. Micah the max? What are we doing? Uh, because his agent won't let that happen. So fire your agent <laughs> and handle the deal with Jerry yourself. I like, yeah. like if you want to be about it, yeah. If you want to say speak about it, then be about it. That that's what you have to do. It's very simple. Those are the three things that can happen. Hey, agent, sorry, yeah. you're fired. Oh, oh, what's up? Jerry, I want to play for this, and I want to take care of these two guys, and now let's go win a championship. See, it's easy for a New Englander to say that <laughs> when you had Tom Brady for so many years. <laughs> taking, taking, hometown take, discount. Yeah. taking hometown discount. Hey, and guess what happened? But you saw the success with those hometown discounts. You hometown discount. You got a chance to win rings, people. Yeah. Well, but we're forgetting the one key part of that. You see, when you have a spouse that's making more money than you, uh, it uh, makes it was. easier for you yeah. to take spouse. Those ex -spouse. Ain't, ain't no mo. Yeah. Well, at the time, though, they weren't ex, and at the time, she was bringing hey, in more cash you than know, him. You know what? Jack is right now what is rich that? he's already rich Correct. he's a quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys he's in so many commercials he just come off a 160 million dollar contract he got his yeah but yeah. are you serious about winning TJ we talk about but, it all the time see, are you I, serious I, about winning we've talked about this though 
because see, there are so many other factors that go into it. If he takes that type of contract, it resets the market. And if you reset yeah, the market, other quarterbacks are going to say, why did you do that? Yep. Because he wants to win. Why do you do that? Oh, because he wants to win. But why can't, as the salary cap go up, why can't I still get mines as well as pay everybody else? I just saw the Detroit that Lions. Works. I just saw the Detroit Lions open up the checkbook, right? For Amon Ross St. Brown, yep. Panay Sewell, and Jared Goff. Yep. Three pillars of the Detroit Lions got yep. paid. I watched Howie Roseman in the Philadelphia Eagles mm-hmm. just give Devontae Smith, give AJ Brown, and last a uh, couple years ago, Jalen Hurts a contract. They got last year. Hey. Yep. So why can't the Cowboys do it? Like, well, where's the you. money going? By the way, look at those two teams. <laughs> been to a Super Bowl. Correct. Been to the NFC Championship game. Dallas can't get out of the second round. Why can't they get paid? I, I just don't understand it. And the each, what is it, yesterday's price? It's not today's it's price. It's not today's price. Yep. I look at C.D. Lamb. I'm looking at Micah Parsons. Mm-hmm. This is what's going on like you got if you don't do it today that thing is going to skyrocket that's the mm-hmm. michael that's parsons the is going to be the highest paid defensive player of the year i mean i'm mean, sorry highest paid defensive player in the time. national football league we know that and you have to do that i remember a long time ago when when the rams first got to los angeles and this was kind of when uh aaron donald was going through his finishing up his rookie deal and i remember asking some you know rams brass Obviously, Aaron Donald has outplayed his contract. He's been to the Pro Bowl every year. He's been to he's been an All Pro, Defense Player of the Year. So, how do you pay that? How does the contract start? He says, "Well, we just give him a blank check and just fill it out <laughs> because that's the kind of player it is. Like that that type of player. I think Micah Parsons is on that same trajectory. And if they don't do it this year, this is what it's going to look like next year." Mm-hmm. That you're going to have to give him a blank check, which takes up the whole entire, not the whole entire, but a good chunk of money. Mm-hmm. And we'll see, especially with a new defensive coordinator, my guy Mike Zimmer. So that's what's going on with go. the Dallas Cowboys. I'm keeping my eye on it for the most part. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day. It's, on an, the- in, it's an interesting debate all the way around. But again, it's not so much that it's just, I just want to say, I only care about Dak Prescott and him getting money like I'm his agent or something like that. I just look at it and say, here's the best thing for the Cowboys to be able to do. Now, I I can look at it from a standpoint of saying that the Cowboys could look at it and say, we're better off taking the $55 million hit this year, getting that out the way and getting the contract done. So that way we absorb that money next year. I mean, this year, next year, we only have to absorb the $40 million along with the new contract, because now we're talking about a new contract and $90 million rolled in, you know, to save some money. And they're looking at this and saying, where do we need to spend all this money right now? We got $9 million, $9.5 million coming, you know, uh, the 1st of June, okay, a week away. And that'll give us about $14 million. That gives us enough to go ahead and make some hay, you know, to bring in a couple other players and make it through the season. We can get CD done and we can get another $10 million. So where's the urgency to say that we have to get that money from Dak Prescott's contract? We can take that. And the thing that's crazy to me is, Ain't nobody talking about the Cleveland Browns and their situation where they have a $63 million hit this year, next year, and the year after on Deshaun Watson. Ain't nobody talking about anybody but Dak Prescott. But that's the way it is when you are the quarterback of America's team. And as always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. We'll be back on track tonight with our live stream at 9 o'clock Eastern here. And I will see you guys there soon. Peace out. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing.